Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining today. My name is Joe Jurek. I am the growth leader and one of the coaches over at Culture Shock in Westlake, Ohio. And I have with me Pete Hansberger, who is our senior coach uh, for, for Culture Shock and has been a part of this organization for quite a while. Uh, we were excited about this one. We've been talking a lot internally about you know, what do people want most or, or need most in 2023. And to kick off the new year, uh, we, you know, we gathered some feedback from, from some of those that we're closest with and uh, put together an article that maybe you've already seen. And today's webinar where we can expand on some of those topics and Pete takes us through the five tips to do or achieve more with less in 2023. So uh, some rules of the road before I turn it over to Pete to introduce Culture Shock uh, himself and the content for today. I am going to have one or two polls. I would encourage you to take part in those. The comments should be open, so feel free to uh, put those in the chat. Uh, we'll do our best to uh, keep an eye on that and uh, address it in the moment when possible. But if you have any questions, feel free to jot those down and we will open it up at the end as well uh, to see you know, what else can we expand on or, or share some insights on. For some of the tools and new tech and resources that we're going to share, I'd also encourage you use the chat uh, to chime in with some that may help the rest of the group that, that you use or that you're familiar with as well. So that said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Pete Hansberger so that that way he can tell us a little bit about what, what we're all doing here today and uh, what to expect uh, for the next roughly 60 minutes. Thanks, Joe. Welcome, everybody. Um, <laughs> I appreciate your willingness to spend some time with us here on a Tuesday afternoon. Um, the topic is five tips to do more with less in 2023. And I just want to make sure everybody knows that, that I, I'm planning to treat this as just a chat that we're having. Joe's going to chime in from time to time. The purpose of it, though, are to share some things that we are doing and have done internally to do more with less. There are some things that we've learned from clients or contacts or friends. Nothing we're going to be sharing today are going to be things that you know we've tangentially heard about or things that we've, we have no experience with. We genuinely want to share some things that we think you can implement. And we're not asking you to implement everything at once. But if everybody here could take one or two things that, that you really are interested in, want to look a little bit deeper into or even implement right away, we'd highly encourage you to do so. So with that in mind, we're going to get started and we're going to launch into five ways that you can do more with less in 2023. So a little bit about us at Culture Shock. Our mission is to discover, engage, and grow leaders. We believe that regardless of your position within the organization, you can exhibit leadership ability and leadership skill. However, we welcome everyone here who's on an executive or leadership team. If you're a mid-manager, a second-level leader, or a team leader supervisor, welcome as well. You're in the right place. Even if you just started or you don't have anybody reporting to you directly, you are also in the right place. So think about anything we talk about today in the context of your position right now, even looking into you know, the, the, the next couple quarters into 2023. So about us, we started about uh, eight and a half years ago as Culture Shock, based in Westlake. We have now worked with over 300 organizations. That is how we've learned what we know and, and what I'm going to share with you today, working with all these diverse organizations, both small businesses, midsize and large organizations. Um, and you know, as part of our 10-year goal, which is to, to make the largest impact that we can on individual employees and leaders. We're at about uh, 30,000 plus right now, about five to six years into our 10-year goal. So uh, let's talk about some of the, the reasons why you might have joined this webinar here today. You know, and, and when we think about... Um, when we think about why we exist as an organization, it's to help individuals, teams, and leaders charge into their storms. So we want to discover, engage, and grow leaders. And the way that we can engage those leaders and help them grow is help them adopt that buffalo or into the storm mentality, which believes that if we charge head-on into things that are important to us, whether they're issues or opportunities, 
We tend to get through things faster and we get better equipped along the way than if we shy away from things and hope they sort of go away. Uh, the way we do this at our organization is in a couple different ways. Number one, we implement the EOS or entrepreneurial operating system process. So we have several implementers on our team here that help small businesses, especially leadership teams, get vision, get traction and get healthy as an organization. We do the Into the Storm Leadership Program and we offer this as a cohort where we look for second and third level leaders or department heads to get together and develop their individual leadership skills, build trust as a group of people or a community of people. Um, and also in a lot of cases, bridge any sort of gaps between mid managers and the executive team. And we offer that program now as a community forum as well. So if you don't have six to eight to 12 people to put into your own cohort within your own organization, we'll be starting in early March, a community forum for the Into the Storm Leadership Program, where we will be getting one to two people together from different organizations and, uh, and create a cohort of 10 to 15 people that can learn from each other, from people outside of their organization. We also help measure the cognitive Colby A assessment, and we have a certified Colby a consultant here on our team as well. Uh, so if you're interested in understanding uh, instinctually how we make decisions and using a resource like Colby to, to make your workplace a better place, uh, we definitely can help there. And we provide keynote speaking on all things related to company culture and leadership development. So uh, getting back to why I think you also might be here is because there's been a lot of talk about is there going to be a recession in 2023? I know different people have different opinions. And our take is that let's assume that's going to happen. But whether or not that actually happens, now is a good time to get ourselves organized and to start thinking about where can we find efficiencies? How can we make sure people are in the right position to succeed? And how can we be proactive in the event that something inevitably becomes a challenge or a storm in our way, whether that's a recession or, you know, in 2020, obviously a pandemic or otherwise. The reality is that every given week or month, and in some cases, in some of our clients, every hour, there is an issue that, that needs to be solved. So let's be proactive about that now while we're on a webinar. So here are the five tips, just very briefly. Number one, we're going to talk about smart goal setting and prioritizing leadership skills as some of those goals. Two is going to be delegating tasks both internally and externally, and we'll talk about what that means. Number three is embracing new technology and tools. I'll be honest, I am not the most, uh, the first early adopter of new technology and tools. However, I have been, uh, I've become a believer in, in at least taking small steps towards embracing new technology because in a lot of cases they can make life easier. Number four, unlocking greater contribution from your team members through development on purpose. And number five is adopting that perpetual learner mindset and seeking out opportunities to both be interested in what somebody else has going on and be helpful to those people. So folks, uh, before we go any further, and I, I look, we'd be remiss if we, we didn't talk about culture shock and our why and the into the storm mindset. So we, we always have to kick off with that because the Buffalo mentality uh, it means a lot to us. We've woven it into everything that we do. Uh, and that's what attracted me to be a part of this organization and to work with Pete. Uh, something that, you know, we're talking about and some of the reason why for doing more with less, uh, we think that way. You know, we have that kind of scrappy startup mentality. We we always are looking to find ways to be more efficient. Uh, and it's because there's never enough time in the day, right? And the, the EOS life that's up on the wall behind me uh, has, has helped both of us uh, be more disciplined in prioritizing our time. And Pete has quite a few reasons for that. Uh, on the personal side, recently, he's expecting his second child here uh, in how long now, Pete? About two and a half weeks. So um, I'm going to need it to do more with less in 2023. And I'm sure anyone here who works for a small business or regardless of the size of your company, you probably wear a lot of hats. You probably have a lot of different things pulling at you from different angles. And, and I'm just one example of that, but it's something it's, it's been highly on my mind over the last few months and, and have spent a lot of time creating contingency plans and what if the baby comes early and all kinds of things like that. So everybody I'm sure who's on this has a different example of something like that in their own lives that you're probably dealing with right now. Yep. That's why uh, it was meaningful for us and, and hopefully relatable for you. Uh, whether you have kids or not, I'm sure you have other passions, you have other things you want to spend time on. And when you're in the business, you want to spend time on the things that matter most. So through delegation, through 
freelance, the gig economy, AI, automation. There's ways to do that that we're going to cover now. I'm going to launch a quick poll. And I'm just curious for the folks who are here, are there any of these that, that drew you in most or that you're most interested uh, to discuss today? I'll leave this up for just another 20 seconds or so if anybody else has a chance to chime in. All right, it looks like about 40% said delegating tasks both internally and externally. Uh, so that that is a, a sweet spot for us uh, that, that we do talk with a lot of clients about. We have a workshop called The Power of Delegation. So we will spend a healthy amount of time on that. It looks like it's now up to 50%. Uh, and then some other folks you know, about it are looking forward to embracing new technology and tools. If you're not yet, I think you, make sure to stick around for that one. Uh, because there are definitely, you can tuck in your tool belt. Uh, and at the end, we're going to share some different links uh, and some free resources that anyone who stays through the end will have access to immediately following this in addition to the recording. So thanks for taking part in the poll. Pete, I will turn it back over to you uh, and share the screen again so that that way you can dive into the first tip. Excellent. Thanks, Joe. And you know, one of the things we talked about as being as being one of the reasons for this this entire webinar here is, you know, what if there is a recession in 2023, and and whether or not there is, you know, we want to provide you the its approach, the into the storm approach to any recession. And for us, you know, it's not as much about numbers and about you know trying to make things work on paper. It's really about you know what is our mentality and what what are our behaviors and our actions. And how can we be not only strategic, but tactical about executing on a day-to-day -day basis in a way that helps us charge through any sort of turmoil, whether it's a recession or otherwise. So if we move to the next slide, we're going to talk about the first tip, which is setting smart goals and prioritizing leadership skills. Uh, I'm guessing if you're on this, you probably know what a smart goal is. Uh, however, in case that, that you know, you've not heard that term or you've not heard it a lot, one of the main things that we try to get our, ment our mind around, and we do this through executing that EOS process, just like we do for a lot of other organizations, internally, when we're setting our goals, we're thinking about individually, department-wise, and as an entire organization, you know, what do we really want to accomplish? Where would we like to be at the end of the year, then at the end of each quarter? And the ways that we do that was we make sure that we think about what we want to accomplish and then break that down into, can we make this as specific as possible? Okay, can we really measure and, and be able to confidently say, I either did this or didn't do this? It's either done or it's not done. It's either complete or it's only a certain percentage of complete. Is it attainable? You know, if, if, if there's something that we want to happen, we want to triple our business, even though our business is uh, you know, that, that we're not set up to do that right now. Maybe that's not an attainable goal, especially when we're expecting some potential economic turmoil. So let's make sure that these are realistic and attainable. Number four is it's relevant. You know, you may want, I don't know if anybody else has visionary uh, leaders that, that you work for or work with who have different ideas all the time. Okay, some of the ideas are relevant to our team's plan. They're in line with our purpose and our mission. And some of them are not. Some of them might be good ideas, but they're not not realistic or it's not relevant to the plan this year. So let's make sure we stay on task with these goals and ensure that they are relevant, that they're going, you know, if we get these things done, they're going to get us closer to what we want to be as an organization. And time bound is very critical. Do we have a deadline for these goals? Uh, and can we make sure that that if it is if it is deadline driven, that we are that we are reporting on a regular basis, we have milestones to ensure that we are sticking to those deadlines. If you could do nothing else but get better in this area, even if you've been doing this for five to 10 years, setting smart goals, there's probably something you can tweak and maybe go back and revisit and just do a once over of your company goals, your department goals, even your individual goals to think, is this as specific, measurable as possible? Is it attainable? Is it as relevant as we should really be focusing on? And is it time bound? So uh, part of the reason we, we start with this is because if you're here and, and you want to do more with less, we have to we have to make the decision. We have to to understand and 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 make the decision that we believe 
Our employees are our number one competitive advantage within our organization. Hey, our best chance of doing more with less is to leverage to the highest degree we can the people that we have around us. So when it, when it comes to goal setting, what we've noticed in a lot of our clients, they will have a list of topics or storms that we discuss in some of their workshops, in their, their team events, in their coaching sessions. And a lot of them come back to, we need it to, to better leverage our people. And, you know, we have a gap here in our in some of our, our leadership skills for our mid managers, or it will be, you know what, our executive team, we don't feel like we're as cohesive as we could be, or we have one person that we think has a lot of potential, but just has a training gap, or maybe they're not as experienced as we'd like them to be. So in that those cases, we encourage them to set smart goals around developing either one or entire teams of their high potential employees or their emerging leaders. So one of the things we highly recommend is, you know, if you'd like to see anything improved within your organization or you'd like to be proactive about developing people, let's make that into a smart goal. So we can take that from a, you know, a really intangible, we need better leaders around here on a, on a whiteboard from that into, okay, what does better leader look like? Let's get specific. Where would we like them to be? Where is point B if we're at point A right now? How are we going to measure this? You know, what are some characteristics and some, some ways we will know if we have better leaders on this, you know, when we get to this point B place, is this attainable? You know, can we carve out time and make sure that the time is spent? Can we use resources both in-house? You know, can, can their boss or their, their supervisor spend time with them? Or do we leverage resources outside? Is it relevant? So is training them going to help them in their position the way that it is? Will it make an impact on those around them in a positive way? And when do we need them to be making those these strides by? So that that's just one example of how we take something that is, you know, we'd like better leaders or we'd like to communicate better and actually make it specific using that, that smart goal uh, task right there. And folks, but behind the scenes, the, the reason for this being tip number one is that the reality is in times of recession or in times of tough economical uh, situations, one of the first places that people cut is training and hiring. And while you want to be fiscally responsible at all times and, uh, you know, have calculated hiring to get people in the right person or the right person in the right seat and to have role alignment, we're here to make the argument for, because we've seen both outcomes, to put the investment in your people. However you go about it, whether it's internally, whether it's leveraging a strategic alliance and some sort of partnership or some sort of tool uh, to do so, if you develop your people better, if you have stronger middle managers, you're going to be able to get more from the rest of your workforce. You're going to tap into higher levels of intelligence and capability that will allow you to save a lot of money in other places and make more in the ways that you want. So sure. by the way, when we're talking about investment, we're talking about yes, investment in dollars, but we're also talking about investment of your own time. So if you need to carve out some additional time or say, you know what, this isn't going to be forever, but we need to carve out some time now to be ready for whatever comes our way in the middle of this year, that is an investment and even an investment in effort. Because sometimes it's easier not to spend time training people or not, not spend time on things that you know might seem intangible now, things like giving feedback or uh, somebody's ability to have a conflict conversation or whether or not we really trust each other. To, to invest that effort into that is sometimes harder than just living with the status quo, but it, it's going to pay off in, in a big way. And so it, it can be money, but it doesn't always have to be money of investment. Yep. The last point on this one, uh, before we take it over to tip two, is just that people-centric cultures, like organizations who have rich culture, where there is ongoing investment in their competitive advantage, in their people, they retain talent more, right? And that in tough times like this, we saw it just during the pandemic, those who continued down that path did strengthen their competitive advantage and leave some competitors behind uh, because the, their focus was on the right things and it was through weathering the storm but addressing things um, so that that way there was more collective partnership and everyone knew what was going on um, so it, you know we, we talk about that a lot because one of the last topics we covered was quiet quitting and how to minimize that and it, it is through your leadership as well it, it's uh, develop them in a way that is going to 
uh, create culture in your organization where people are challenged and they want to stick around because they're a part of something. So, uh, Pete, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Anything else on this one before we move into number two? I think we're good. And I think if, if we're specific about things and realize that, that no matter how many times we've, we've, we've thought about the same solutions or the same objectives, there's always another angle we could take. So we're never going to run out of creative objectives to create or creative goals to create. And let's not think that we've exhausted all of our potential options without, uh, without you know, thinking about, could, what, could I change the angle on something that I'm already doing? Um, if we take that mentality that there's always another way that we could approach something, we're never fully you know, out of the fight, so to speak. Uh, that just continues to open up that world of possibilities. Yep. So let's talk about number two. Number two is, you know, this this was the most popular in the survey. Um, this is something that we are really, really passionate about, like Joe said. But I want to talk about delegating both internally and externally. You know, in an ideal world, internally, we all have enough people that I can delegate anything I think I need to delegate to somebody that's standing to my right, just looking at me saying, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's go. But in reality, you know, things get messy. Not everybody's already trained up on things that, that we think we need to delegate. But as a leader, sometimes we we have too many too much things on our plate or too much work on our plate. Um, and if, if you're an EOS company or you're running that process right now, you've probably heard of the story about uh, letting go of the vine. But if not, you know, imagine uh, a business owner or a leader is walking along the side of a cliff and ends up tripping and starts to slide down that cliff. Okay, so this owner, this leader, halfway down the cliff actually just go, is able to grab a vine. So there's, it's on the side of the mountain, he's tumbling off the cliff, is able to grab this and that's the only thing holding him up. Okay, and so that, that leader, that owner looks up and he's holding on to this vine and he's shouting, is anybody up there? You know, and, and after a, a few seconds, he gets a voice that comes down from on high and said, you know, hello, I hear you. This is God. And he says, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I'll do anything you want. Can you please help me? And the voice on high says, you know, I will help you. I'll protect you. I'll save you. All you need to do is let go of the vine. Just trust me. Just let go of the vine. And the owner or leader thinks about it for another second or two, looks back up and shouts, is anybody else up there? You know, and that story is about you know, despite the fact that we might know what the right answer is, or we might feel like, you know what, we have to delegate because my schedule is just too busy. My plate is too full. It's the right thing to do. Sometimes it's still hard to let go of that vine. And we hold that, that fist so tightly. So if we are going to delegate, we need to mentally make the decision that, you know what, in 2023, I am going to let go of the vine or at least loosen the grip a little bit on that vine. You know, and we've had some clients even recently tell us, well, you know, I delegated something, but then the person made a mistake. Okay. Or I delegated something and it didn't go perfectly right away. And we understand that there are rocky situations and it's not always going to be easy. However, if we want to take things off our plate and give us the, the opportunity to do things that, that are, are we're most interested in and that are the most high value to our organization, we need to let go of the vine sometimes. You know, if you're if you're an owner of a business and you're doing a lot of $15 an hour work, there are some things that you need to get off your plate just for the betterment of the business. There's also the opportunity to develop other people, to give them further engagement, to give them further challenge, to help coach them through things and have them step up. You know, I just talked to a client yesterday who said, you know, we really need our mid-manager team to be running the day-to-day -day operations of this entire organization. Because as an executive team, we want to be freed up to go look for new opportunities, to make big relationships and to, to keep thinking strategically and executing on how to, how to make this organization the best it can be. But we can't do that if we're spending all of our time trying to run the day-to-day -day operations. So that's an opportunity for not only the, the executive team to delegate, but for the mid-manager team to step up and be willing uh, and, and worthy of being delegated to. Yeah. Pete, do you think it should always just be the most... Uh meaningless tasks or, or busy work sort of tasks that, that you delegate or or what what's your philosophy there? Absolutely not just the most meaningless tasks. And and what I would encourage everybody to do, and we're actually going to show you on the screen uh, one of our one of our coaching drivers, which can help you start to list this out. 
I would think about first, you know, what are the activities that you currently spend your most time doing? Okay, and I'm sure a lot of these are high value activities, but on the left side of this document, which we are going to provide to you, this is our coaching driver we call write your role. So if you think that you have some room to improve in terms of delegation, or you're just not sure if you're spending your time the way that you really should be spending your time, think about and list out the top 10 ways that you use your time in a, in a work setting right now. And then the right side of that are the top 10 things you think you should be doing. So if you're an executive team member, even if you're a mid-manager, if on the left side of here, you have a lot of administrative tasks, or you're filling out your own expense reports, or things, there are things that you feel even maybe are pretty high value, but really don't align with your strengths, or don't align with, align with things that you really like to do, then maybe it makes sense to drop some of them off. And maybe, maybe not everything on the left side of that goes on the right side of that. And so the idea here is that we want to take stock on the left column and in inventory what we are currently doing and how we are spending the most amount of our time, and then think strategically, how really should I be spending the most amount of my time? And then, then the next step is, if you look at the bottom of that page, there are actions that you can write your role, that you can either delegate from the left side, you could potentially automate. Maybe there's some things that you just don't even have to be doing at all that you could eliminate. OK, so there are, there are op options and opportunities there. And a lot of times when we're coaching somebody, we'll work them through this document and help hold them accountable one activity at a time. But back to Joe's original question, you know, we're not just saying just take off your plate filing and copying and things like that. Sometimes when we're trying to, to use delegation, not only for our sake, but but to develop somebody else. We want to look for things that maybe I'm not great at, but somebody else is great at. And it's still a high value activity for the organization or an opportunity where I can create some space for somebody else to step up and to lead. And so we have to have a little bit of humility, too, and understanding that, you know what, we want to spend our time doing the highest value activities we possibly can. But understand, too, there might be some weaknesses that we have regardless of how intelligent you are, or how successful you are, or, or if you're the one who started the business. You know, a lot of times we don't want to let things go because we care about quality. We want to make sure that that you know our clients get the, the best from us. However, we have other other people that are that are on board. And so if we want to do more with less from a delegation standpoint internally in 2023. Let's better leverage our people. Think about any individual opportunities that you think somebody would be willing to step up and take on. Think about people as you look out into your office or your bullpen. You know, where could somebody take their next step of development and could you help them get there through some sort of delegation activity? And if you've been burned in the past, don't let it make you too jaded about delegating. Like we were working with a group, uh, an executive team where one of the uh, C-suite members was like, ah, it just doesn't work. Uh, and when you peel back a couple layers uh, and this is a true story, right? It was just like so closed off to it. When he had delegated in the past, he just handed over the baton and then disappeared. Instead of trusting enough to do so and then validating that the person was informed enough that they were supported enough. Because in the beginning, it's a little harder, right? And, and that's Kind of the, the the thing that people struggle with is you delegate so that that way it does free you up because it, it will make things easier. It will challenge others to grow. But in the beginning, when you still need to support that person and teach them, it is a little more challenging. You just have to see that through before uh, it's kind of a, a hockey stick, right? Where it'll go down and then it goes way up as far as how easy it is. So I just put that coaching driver sheet that Pete covered uh, in the chat. Feel free to download that. Uh, and use it. Let us know if you have any questions on it. But uh, Pete has personally covered that with a lot of different individuals and organizations. We know that there's value in taking a clarity break, thinking that way, so that that way you can be smart about how you're spending your time. Uh, and uh, I'll also include a link to it in the follow-up email, but we, we just want to make sure everybody had a copy of that. Thanks, Joe. And one more note on delegation is you talked about, you know, if we need to let go of the vine, we want to make sure somebody else gets a good grip of it. You know, so that that goes into the, the training, not just handing off the baton, but sticking with that and ensuring that somebody is ready 
That way we can mitigate and, and making sure the communication is clear back and forth um, and making sure that we're mitigating the opportunity for them to make those big mistakes. I think we we want to encourage people and, and we want to live with some of the small mistakes. So that that's another thing that we've worked with some clients on. And you know, we've discussed this a lot internally as well. You know, what are some of those below that threshold of things we can live with? You know, if this person makes a mistake here and there, or if they sign off an email incorrectly, you know, a lot of those times we can live with some of those small mistakes, but determine what is above that line of things that we absolutely need to make sure that 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 is correct, that we can't afford to live without uh, live with some of those larger mistakes. So let's let's determine that. And that that's that's can be helpful in terms of delegation. Um, I was gonna say. You know, we also don't want to pretend that every delegation opportunity internally is going to happen quickly. You know, my biggest success story working with clients and delegation uh, is an op- is you know where a major task was delegated, but it took over a year, and it took over a year of quarterly training with with somebody who is going to take over a specific responsibility that took multiple days each quarter for one of our clients. And it, it felt at times like it was taking forever, but once it finally, that baton was passed, the other person had the strong grip on that. It was a huge success story and it took a major uh, major task off the plate of one of their executive team members and it, it allowed somebody else to step up and develop. So now that we've talked a little bit internally, you know, of course it can be frustrating sometimes when we don't feel like we have somebody right away to delegate to, okay? And so, you know, especially if with a potentially looming recession or any difficult or challenging economic times and always in general, we want to be fiscally responsible. So if we don't have, you know, my, my own department full of people who are ready and willing to be delegated to right now, uh, potentially you can leverage an external workforce. So this is something we're, we've gotten uh, very familiar with over the last few years. And we've, we've noticed a lot of clients starting to have success with too. Just wanted to give you a couple a uh, couple of resources that that we use or have had close clients use as well. You know, Joe mentioned the gig economy. It's obviously not going away. And and what what was illuminating to me as someone who is somewhat of a resistor to some of this uh, external workforce and new technology tools, what was illuminating to me is that there are really talented people out there, both stateside USA and, and internationally. Uh, and we've we've leveraged with a lot of success Fiverr. Um, which is a, a website of freelancers, anything from design to writing to um, to just sort of creative work. Be Creatives is a unlimited video editing software that we're that we're leveraging and, and have had a lot of success with. Um, if you're somebody that wants to create content, you want to more, make more LinkedIn posts, you would like to you like to better document what you do for the market, uh, uh, for your you know who you're marketing to, as well as. Uh, as well as even for potentially for training purposes internally, Be Creatives is a great tool. And then Selex is something I know Joe has a little bit more um, a little bit more experience with, but that's basically a, a, an an outsourced uh, sales force at your fingertips that uh, that uh, that includes automation and allows you to to really be seeing dashboard wise um, what type of appointment setting and things like that are happening for you. So these are just a few that that we have used with a lot of success. You know, in fact, when it comes to Fiverr, earlier this year, we had a client engage us for a two-day conference. And on day two, they requested something unique that is something I had not done before, but they were very adamant that, you know, I'd really like to improve, or we'd really like to include this into our conference. Is there any chance you could figure it out? And trying to, to you know, serve as clients as much as we possibly could, they thought about it and thought, you know what, I'm not an expert on this necessarily, this particular activity. However, let me let me see if I can come up with something so I don't have to uh, start with a blank slate. Went to Fiverr, found somebody who was passionate, who loved to do that. And that person and I collaborated, somebody I never even met in person. And they helped me get to the point where I could I could take a rough draft and I could continue on and I could actually execute the activity. So it was a, a big success. So just one quick story there. And I don't know, Joe, if you have any other comments about any of these three, uh, these three resources, uh, these are just three examples of of many that ourselves and our clients have used uh, to comprise that external work, workforce. Yeah, this one is uh, near and dear for me, and uh, this and the tool utilization. I, I've worked at a couple startups uh, prior to this that were rapid growth and trying to just be as resourceful as possible. And uh, Pete Pete wasn't lying; he, he's been a little resistant at times, but definitely come around. 
uh, with, with seeing the value in leveraging an external workforce in some ways, because it, not only is it the like prudent or responsible thing to do as a leader, rather than hiring a bunch of people that you end up needing to lay off. Uh, but if, if you're trying to scale quickly and, and trying to grow, you, you've got to identify all the different mechanisms that you have at your disposal. Be creatives. Video editing takes a long time, right? And it, it's something that you can go down the rabbit hole and you can have somebody where that's all they end up doing. And at different stages of growth, that may just not be realistic. But with content being the way that it is today, you know that you've got to be represented on a lot of different channels. You want uh, to record and put things out on a regular basis for your website, for social, whatever. Uh, Be Creatives is an unlimited video editing services a service where uh, we, we communicate with them regularly and then give feedback uh, in a timestamp version of the video that they're uh, editing. It's great. Cellex is business development at your fingertips where you have complete control and visibility that to everything that's happening so that that way you don't have to worry about poor representation of brand or something like that when outreach is being done. The idea here, folks, is just look at things differently and explore where you can find some efficiencies. Because even if you have somebody on your team that could design that flyer, could they go spend $7 on Fiverr to get something faster so that that way they can spend more time focusing on things that they're uniquely strong at or that matter more in the business? When you weave these together into your workflows, uh, it, it can lead to a really, really good result. All right, thanks, Joe. Let's let's talk the next tip here. So, you know, we mentioned these are just three of several examples. The next tip is is related, but this is really just more about number one, being open to potentially new technology and tools that are available to you. So, uh, you know, I might be thinking about you know what are some tools that are available, but also why am I resisting? You know, is there anything that that could make my life easier? And and rather than resist that or say, I don't trust this or that, or if you want something done right, you've got to do it yourself. Rather than having that mentality, think about, you know, in the, the context of doing more with less, you know, what else is out there? You know, is there a problem I would like solved that I'm not sure how to solve? Or do I feel like I don't have, uh, do I feel like I don't have people right now that are available to solve this for me? Uh, or is there just something I, I could, I, I'd like to make my life a little bit easier? So let's talk about a couple examples of some of these new technologies and tools that that we'd like to uh, just share with you now. Um, these are things that that we're familiar with, and you're probably familiar with some of them, maybe even all of them. But uh, obviously, if if you're familiar at all with design, Canva is is a program that that you can provide professional design services for yourself, for your own social media. Uh, for your own website, uh, really anything visually where you don't need to get the entire Adobe suite. You don't need Photoshop and you don't need everything like that to, to be professional in that regard. So that's that's a nice resource that you can have at your fingertips. Uh, if you're familiar with us and, and have worked with us much, you're probably familiar with BombBomb Bomb because you probably received a BombBomb Bomb from me. That is an example of a video email where you know, if you if you want to introduce somebody to somebody else via email, if you want to just send a long email, but you'd rather just say it verbally because uh, it takes too long to type it out, or you don't want to ask somebody, especially if somebody's not a detailed person, I don't want to ask them to scroll down and read walls of text in an email. I might just send a quick bomb bomb video, which integrates with your email, and it's something we've noticed has been uh, pretty favorably received on the the receiving end of that when it comes to emails. There's also some things that we've started to uh, integrate a little bit called Jasper AI, which is using artificial intelligence. Uh, Loom is a, a great video uh, video and training uh, tool as well. And then Descript is something that Joe is familiar with uh, and, and it's a little bit more of an expert on than me. But but in in addition to any of these things that we'll share with you, and we're glad to talk through any, any of these in more detail too, if anybody's interested, I'd encourage you if you have a resource or a tool that is technology based that you'd like to share with everybody else here on the webinar, feel free to put it in the comments now. You know, what's your favorite technology tool? I'd also like to encourage you to think about, you know, instead of just let's go look at as many technology tools as possible, if I'm if I'm thinking practically about how you could use this, I might ask you to take a blank slate and think about what is a problem I would like solved? What is something I would like to make my life easier? 
okay, or where, what is something I would like to, to make more efficient in 2023? Start with that function or that problem you would like solved and then work our way to, is there an app or is there a technology resource available to solve that problem? And in 2023, chances are, whether it's an app, whether it's a, a resource that's that's online or web-based, whether it's even you know a YouTube video that you can watch, whether it's um, you know anything along those lines, like maybe it's even a personal thing. Maybe you know what at home I, I'd really like to make this easier, or I'd like to you know dip my toes into grocery delivery because I want to spend a little bit more time uh, with my family rather than have to go do this other task. There's all kinds of things out there. So if I'm you, I'm thinking tactically about what is a function I would like to be better served in 2023, even from a business standpoint, what is something we know we're gonna need some efficiencies around that we currently don't have? And there might be a technology resource available for that purpose. Yeah, great, Pete. I, I think uh, th there's there's so many out there, right? And if anybody here, this jogged a, a thought or, or something that you're using or you're familiar with that you think uh, could be a value, please feel free to share it in the chat if you'd like to chime in. Uh, another one that we're big fans of is Vouch. Uh, it allows us to give video testimonials. There, there's so much with AI and automation now. And if you are resistant to it, again, you can kind of get left behind. Now, you don't want to, I, I have, uh, if you're familiar with Colby, uh, I am a high quick start. So I'll try things out every other day. And it you know, it's important to have balance, just like the, the visionary integrator balance with the OS uh, within your team where Pete will pull me back sometimes because if you can get analysis paralysis, you, you can have all these tools and they can start to collect dust if you're not identifying the ones that work, testing them out with some speed and then sticking with how you're weaving them into your workflows. But I'll tell you what, it can change your hiring strategy if you have the right tools in place because now you can focus on them being the right fit based on core values, based on these other competencies, and you don't need this unique skill set uh, that that is counterweighted with poor personable or uh, you know poor poor relational skills or something like that because you needed to find somebody who had this very specific technical aptitude. So uh, there's a lot of different ways to look at it, but the point being, uh, they're all around you. Seek out new tools and ways that you can just save time and effort and these are a few that we can tell you from experience and firsthand uh, knowledge from our clients like they will help you get there but i'll say too if, if seeing a lot of different options like this or thinking about all this new technology is somewhat overwhelming um you're definitely not alone if you're thinking that way but also think about systems you already have can you use them to to more of their fullest potential and that's another in my mind way to embrace that that technology or those resources. You know, a year ago, we thought about, can we use Microsoft Office to a little bit more of its full potential and looked into templates and quick parts and now have a much better system, much more automated system for actually sending follow-up emails to clients after coaching sessions and after, after a lot of our workshop sessions, because all we have is a template that we just, we have already uh, load it into the system, just click it, it automatically populates into an email, we change a couple of things, and then we send it out. So there are those type of things uh, all around us. If you even think about if you're a Microsoft Teams organization, you know, can you use tasks in a Teams, uh, in, in Teams, or can you use that to its better full potential, which we've made a lot of progress in that internally over the last year or two, um, versus, you know, you know what, well, now we need a different workflow software. We need, you know, instead of two to three apps, we just use, you know, teams to a little bit more of a full potential. And so, you know, that's another place to start. If you're looking for more efficiencies, can I use the software I already have uh, more, uh, more robustly? So let's talk number four as we're getting a little bit short on time. Uh, number four, we want to unlock the greater contribution with leadership development. We mentioned our people are our number one competitive advantage. Uh, I just want to encourage everybody to think about, you know, can we use our people as multipliers. And, and, and I want to, and when I say that, I want to talk a little bit about this book called Multipliers by Liz Wiseman, uh, which we're a big fan of this book. And Joe is actually going to be working with Liz uh, in about a month at a conference directly, but it's a really good book. It's a, you know, a bestseller um, business book, but it makes the case that 
any investment of time, effort, or money that you put into your own people has the opportunity to multiply and to provide that effect. Okay. And so there's different ways here we can we can basically help that multiplier effect take over. And so, you know, we talk a lot at Culture Shock about when we're building trust with other people or helping them develop, we want to be interested more than we're interesting. So we want to be genuinely interested in what someone else has to say. So if we want to ask better questions, we want to be interested, okay? And, and when, I, when it comes to asking better questions, that's finding out where some people's strengths really lie. That's finding out where they can better contribute, where they like to contribute. And then when we do that, we can look for opportunities for them to contribute better. You know, if everybody here walked out of, walked out of this session today and said, you know what, with my, I want to encourage each of my department heads to provide me a little presentation by the end of February about number one, you know, who in their department, you know, would would be able to step up and take on a little bit more challenge, what type of challenges we could provide to them, and even a proactive recession plan for each department, you know, you might find that, that you've got all kinds of gold in there, you know, and that, and that gets people engaged and motivated. And then you might be able to implement some or all of some of those recommendations and allow them to take that ball and run with it. Okay. That, that leads to bigger challenges. You know, it reminds me of one of our, one of our clients who's an engineer by trade told me, you know, he worked for General Electric as a summer intern back when he was 20, 21 years old. And we're talking several years ago now. And he said, you know, they brought me into a room on my first day with a giant machine. And they said, look, this machine costs about $20 million and it doesn't work right now. So your internship responsibility is to figure out why it doesn't work and make it work. And, and that is a huge challenge, but not only sort of overwhelming, but for somebody who's curious and somebody who's into engineering, it was great because it was, hey, let me start tinkering with this thing. Let me start taking it apart. They let him know he could have budget if he needed it to order new parts and things like that. But that's, you talk about a big challenge and something that you know is going to make a difference for your organization if you can make some progress on this. And then we, ne we need to ensure that we're creating space for people to answer the questions if we're asking them, to ask their own questions, to step up and lead. Okay, and these, this isn't necessarily in order. So you don't need to do one of these things before the other. If you're doing any of the four, we're making progress and we're intentionally trying to create that multiplier effect where any time I spend with one person developing their leadership skills or helping them take on a little bit more challenge has the potential for them to multiply their product productivity or their contribution to the team. And they also can take that mentality and then share it with somebody else as well and, and multiply it that way. So there's all kinds of opportunity here. Um, we'd highly recommend this book, um, but even in general, if, if you could think about any of those four things, do you have an opportunity over the next couple months to be proactive about you know, storms that are on the horizon or even things that, that are, are you're right in the middle of right now, can you re-engage your team better around uh, being proactive and having a plan for some of those things? Yeah. Pete, this is something we, we talked a lot about before this webinar, right? Because the, the answer is for a lot of folks, you can do more with less or you can do more today with what you already have on your team. And uh, a lot of the, the research and the wisdom that comes from this, you know, we, we attribute it to, uh, to Liz and her team, uh, but there, there was something that said, you know, the average organization utilizes about 45 to 50% of the intelligence and capability of their workforce. And that, that's, you know, when, when you stop to think about that, it makes sense, uh, but it, it kind of grabs you because that's the responsibility of leadership is to multiply instead of limit uh, the, the capability of your team. So if you delegate more, if you encourage them to think for themselves, you ask instead of tell, and you try to align them with roles that are you know tapping into their unique ability or their fit, um, you're going to be a multiplier as well, right? So uh, this is one, it, you know, it, it kind of ties into and threads through everything that we've talked about today is really just like leaders part to play and what they need to get out of their next layer of leadership is more of this, because if you can get your people contributing at a higher level, tapping into and leveraging more of their capability and intelligence, you're going to get a whole lot more done without increasing your workforce, right? Yep. And it really just starts with, with us asking 
you know, going person by person and thinking, you know, does this person have something more to offer? Have I noticed something? Can I talk to their supervisor if it's not me? You know, can I offer them a bigger challenge? If I had to offer one additional challenge to each person that I identify here, what might that be? Then how can I create that space or carve out the time for them to learn that or carve out the time for me to, to provide some training and some counsel? Can I ask people to just go research? Can I ask somebody to, to put a draft together of a recession plan for their own department or their own, uh, or, you know, or even the entire organization? You know, that, that kind of stuff is engaging and, you know, we don't necessarily have to have more people for that. Let's leverage the people we do have and see if we can turn that sort of 45% utilization of somebody's in intelligence or intellectual capability. Can we increase that by 10 to 20% over the next year because we're doing things like this on purpose? Yeah. So that rolls into the final tip today of doing more with less in 2023 is, uh, as you know, I guess we're not quite done with this. I, I you know, We'd be remiss if we didn't mention this is how we this is how we attempt to to invest in leadership development and what we try to offer. And I mentioned a lot of this at the beginning of the webinar, but you know whether it's engaging a third party like Culture Shock or whether it's doing something like this internally, you can create a community or a cohort of department heads within your own organization if you're being intentional about it, or you can use an additional resource. Can you find communities that you can put people into? Okay, one on one coaching is something where, you know, this is something you can do internally, or you can, you can bring in somebody like us to just ask a lot of those good questions and help people identify areas in which they can grow opportunities for delegation that are going to help themselves and others, as well as objectives and creative solutions or options for those objectives. We can also provide standalone workshops on specific and kind of go deep in specific areas, uh, as well as help with facilitation of conferences or meetings as well. So uh, number five here is, is if we want to do more with less in 2023, we need to adopt a perpetual learner mindset. So we want to seek out wisdom. And we have a ton of examples of things that we've learned from our clients. Okay. Bomb bomb is something we learned from a client. They sent us one and we, we said, what the heck is that? And they let us know what it was and we've been using it ever since. Okay. Can we be looking? Can we have those binoculars on and be extra perceptive in early 2023 about who around us is doing something that's working? Who's doing something? Uh, who has a solution to a problem that I might have? Okay, we have all kinds of, you know, one of our clients right now is, is taking it upon himself to seek out somebody who's a peer in his industry who has a similar job description or one up from what he currently has terms of up the chain. And he's seeking out consistent relationship building activities with people like that. So a lunch here and there, a grabbing a drink here and there, doing a Zoom meeting here and there, and making it a consistent part of his process so that he is purposely having that perpetual learner mentality. You know, you can sort of see it behind me here on our wall, but relentless growth is one of Culture Shock's core values. And we think about, we wanna be growing relentlessly in terms of learning new things, in terms of growing our business, in terms of growing our the impact that we're making on our clients, but also helping our clients do all of those things too. You know, this is an example of relentless growth. You know, one last point on this I'd like to make um, is, is not only just sort of adopting this mentality, but actually taking some steps forward, like something we call a genius network. We didn't make that up necessarily, but but creating your own genius network or your own board of directors. So if you think about any function within your business, you know, who is your go-to person for each of the major segments of that business? So do you have a subject matter expert available that, that you have written down and that you're aware of who that is if I have a question about this? You know, and then even outside of work, you know, do you have a financial go-to person who's part of your genius network? If you have a, a money question or a tax question, do you have a person? You know, if it's a, a relationship building thing, do you, do you have a person? You know, who is, who is our own personal board of directors who, could, who, who we would like to learn from, who I am intentionally going to seek out to learn from, okay? Uh, that's something we've helped people establish that board. And, and you don't necessarily need somebody else in, you know, in front of you asking you those questions and helping you do it. But, you know, if it's me at the very least, I want to think about who are all the go-tos in what I consider the important parts of my life, business and otherwise, and if I don't have somebody, if I have a gap there, then I want to even seek that out a little bit more. 
you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll leave everybody with um, a story from Benjamin Franklin, uh, who, who has an anecdote that, that talks about, you know, if we want, if we want to, to seek some, seek out some help, the best way to do that is actually to ask somebody for a favor. So if you have a neighbor that moves into your neighborhood, one of the best ways to engage with that person is not to go and do them a favor, but even to ask them for a favor. Hey, can I borrow an onion? You know, I'm cooking something. Can I borrow a, a tool? I'm trying to cut down a tree in my, my front yard. Okay. When we ask somebody for a favor, that gives somebody else an opportunity to help. And what we found is that most people out there like to help. You know, if any of you have been contacted by high school students or college students, like we have several times, and, and they ask, hey, can I do an informational interview or can I uh, can I come shadow you for a little bit? We get a lot of we get a lot of pleasure and and we want to help. You know, it's it's exciting, it's fun. I'm I know that I'm able to help somebody. Not only if if you ask somebody for that favor, they're gonna help, they're gonna want to help you. It gives them a chance to do something productive and to be helpful, but then they sort of know, hey, I did you a favor. That, that gives you then an opening to help them back. And so then it, it becomes this mutual relationship where, you know what, it, I, I've heard all kinds of, uh, I've heard all kinds of resistance to that, you know, hey, go seek out some people, go ask for advice because, you know, the, the resistant questions are, well, what if, what if somebody, uh, you know, what if somebody's too busy? I don't want to, I don't want to interrupt them. I don't want, you know, I don't want to take up too much of their time. Well, if we want to be perpetual learners, one of the best ways to do that is just to go ask, get outside your comfort zone a little bit, try to schedule conversations that don't necessarily have a rigid agenda, but are just, hey, I'd like to, I'd like to ask some questions here. I'd like to see uh, what you're thinking. I'd like to hear what you're experiencing, and I'd love to share my experiences as well. So that was an interesting sort of counterintuitive story from Ben Franklin, who talked about, you know, I could go to the business park around us and just offer my help all day. But if I go to them and say, "Hey, you know, would you mind picking up my mail while uh, while we're while we're out for the next couple of days?" That gives them a chance to help, and then creates uh, more of a mutual relationship. So, Joe, I'll turn it back over to you. But I want to encourage everybody here to be thinking about, you know, who could you be seeking out for either experiences, for advice, uh, even to just develop mutual relationships that you'd like to learn from them. Uh, and and where are there gaps in your own sort of personal genius network of go to people? Yeah, it's a great sentiment uh, to end the tips with, Pete, because, you know, it. unfortunately, a lot of folks do operate in a vacuum or a silo right? instead of uh, seeking out wisdom from others. And if you have humble confidence, no matter what you've achieved, no matter what stage in your career you're at, you continue to look for wisdom from others, even if it is from somebody more junior than you. Uh, and, and Pete, you're a testament to that. Like you, you are an expert and created great habits around not only seeking out wisdom, but then sharing it with others. So uh, we appreciate that you, you know, did that today for us. Uh, and I've got uh, just some next steps here that I'll that I'll share with everybody. So that, that way uh, we can close this up. We know we're at about time. Um, just I, I'm gonna pause for a moment. Does anybody have any questions? Anything that they they want to share? Uh, with the group, or they'd like us to expand on a little bit more before we uh, put up a slide with some some resources. All right, feel free to jump in uh, between now and the end if you do. Uh, but when we're talking about what's next, uh, you are going to get a follow up email. It'll have a recording to this webinar and links to the following. Uh, there's a free assessment that will help you gauge is your team charging into the storm or not, as well as some recommendations. If it would benefit you or you have any interest, uh, feel free to reach out because you can get a free hour of one-on-one -on -one coaching with Pete or myself or another member of the team. Uh, there's an opportunity to register for the community forum that's going to kick, kick off on March 8th if you have a member or two of your team who you'd like to develop in the program. If you're interested in learning more about Colby, we will offer one free Colby assessment uh, per organization, and we'll do a comprehensive review or have you meet with our consultant to do so. Uh, we'll have a webinar next month, so keep an eye out for that. You can, of course, keep in touch with us by subscribing to our newsletter. If you're interested in learning more about EOS, let us know. We'll do a free 90-minute meeting, uh, and then also that delegation uh, playbook or, or worksheet. We'll make sure everybody has a copy of that as well. 
Uh, so from Pete and myself, thank you. Keep an thank eye you. out on your email. Uh, and you're going to get a uh, thanks a latte from the team here at Culture Shock for your time uh, and for, for engaging with us. You know, we wish you the best in 2023. Pete, I'll turn it back over to you one last time to say any closing words. Yeah, we appreciate. Thanks for, for taking your time on a Tuesday afternoon. Um, I would just encourage you to pick out at least one thing from this webinar and take some action on it. You know, you devoted the time to be here with us. Uh, think about one resource that we talked about. Go back and watch that recording or even fast forward it to one place that you remember that you want to get a little more detail on. Or feel free to reach out to Joe or I by email uh, at any time and we can we can help take it from there. So thanks again, everybody. Have a great rest of the week. All right, folks, charge into the storm. See ya.